So we're parked here at Edinburgh in Scotland. We're going to do a positioning flight to Belfast City Airport. This is the free Edinburgh Airport by TDG, which is available in the notes below. Belfast City is also free by TDG as well, uh, link below. Um, and the base scenery uh, en route is going to be the ortho covering the whole routes, um, which is available for free download as well. You'll be pleased to hear. So just having a quick look at the route. So this is in um, in Simbrief, um, and it's a very simple and short route, it's about 120 miles or so. Let's have a look at that in Nevergraf. We depart from Edinburgh, we fly out to the west, um, just passing Glasgow, um, and then down the sort of uh, coast of Scotland. A short hop over the uh, the Irish Sea there to to a waypoint called Maggie, which is the starting point for the ILS into Belfast City. So I'm going to be using Navigraph charts for um, our progress on route and also for the uh, for the instrument approach charts for um, Belfast. So let's have a look at the uh, but let's have a look at the departure plate for Edinburgh at this point. So um, we are departing runway 24 from Edinburgh down to the Uniform Whiskey NDB and then out to Gossam, which is the start of our navigation route. So for our approach to Belfast City then, so our, our starting point would be Maggie and then just um, an intersect to the ILS approach from there. Very simple one really. So uh, with all, all of that in hand, it's relatively easy to um, set up and um, set up our flight management system, get everything set up, ready to go. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we do is open the taxiway chart for Edinburgh. And we've got frequency 131.35 on the ATIS there, so it's one of the first things I'm going to do when we, um, when we get all the electrics set up and start programming everything. Uh, let's get into the aircraft. Okay, so the uh, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is to switch on the external power, which you can see with this green available uh, indicator on. So as soon as we press that, everything lights up. Uh, so a very quick tour. No overhead panels, just uh, some lighting controls and our compass. Got the main autopilot control panel, which is a little bit more complex than you see on some airliners but it gives them some extra controls it's not just about the automatic flight so it gives you some some control over the glass panels below so each pilot gets two panels and they can be uh, configured the way you want it um, and then the central pedestal has a bulk of the controls that we're going to be using to set up so we've got our fuel air pressurization controls anti-ice electrical and then flight management computers both sides so this is default FMS from X-Plane. It's not what you would get on the real aircraft, which is a shame. We've got the lighting controls, hydraulic panel, the power plant. We've got the spoilers. Um, and then we have this interface, which is not really useful for us on the simulator where it is. Um, it's more useful as a pop-up panel, which I'm glad to say is available. And then below that, the fire panel. Uh, and below that, the APU controls and the starters for the engines and right at the back. Uh, light controls and oxygen um, and then to the left we've got uh, the cockpit lights and this really is a very awkward set of controls because it's almost impossible to both see those controls and see what you're affecting um, no matter where you position which is um, a little bit frustrating so normally we run through checklists um, and I, I have created a custom checklist which I've been using with the fourth flight application which is a real uh, pilots GA application has quite a decent checklist feature within it but you have to copy it all from the aircraft um, however for the today's flight I will be just using the on-screen checklist um, which uh, is is seen on the first officers panel here so I'll just zoom in to that um, and that's controlled by a little pop-up um, remote that gives you the ability to configure these screens so let's have a look at that as well so what I'm going to do is just bring the checklist up so now you can see it's a floating panel um, and also uh, the control for the for the glass and just give you a quick demonstration there. Um, so there's a switch at the top here that goes between left and right and that controls whether you're um, controlling the first officer or captain's side. Um, so we can click through this um, 
Oh, this wasn't quite right. So we've got the checklist uh, set up at the moment. We can use this to cycle through the checklist items. Um, we can also configure the navigation display by clicking on this button. Now, some of these controls are replicated on both sides, uh, and this is a good example of one of those. So it changes all of our views. Um, then this button is for traffic, uh, to turn traffic on or off, uh, and then to go cycle between traffic and weather. Um, now, it doesn't have a built-in weather radar, but there's a free download which you can which gives you that capability um, the other thing that's really useful is the summary uh, and let me just zoom in so I've got that on the first officers display gives you a really good summary of all of the values that you really need particularly for the checklist items so I normally have that sitting there as I'm going through um, so we can actually check all the values um, and then the bottom row controls what you see um, at the bottom part of the selected panel. So this is the right hand panel, the first officers panel. At the moment it's showing the navigation display, but we can click on anti-ice and uh, gives you a schematic view of that system. Same with the ECS. Uh, so this is the um, air conditioning and air control system. The electric panel at the moment shows 28.1 volts through external power, no APA running and no generators running. Uh, then the flight controls so that's really useful when we're, we're taxing out, we're just checking the controls are accurate and working. Uh, our fuel panel, which shows the amount of fuel in pounds that we have both sides um, and shows the, uh, the flows there as well. Um, and then the hydraulic panel. So again, we need that when we're, we're checking um, the pressures are good uh, when we actually power up. So what we're going to do now is go through the checklist um, items uh, from cold and dark um, and that will involve us um, actually doing the external walk around which I'll start but I'm going to um, bypass that um, so I find it very useful to have the checklist uh, popped out onto the main screen here so as we look around the cockpit it's just following us there and then we need the other control below it to check off e each item so um, Door uh, document safety equipment, you have to assume we've got all of that. And as you click on each button, it greens up the one above. Uh, switches and CBS checked. Gear handle is down. Air source off. Standby instruments on. So some of these buttons are illuminated because they're off, and some are illuminated because they're off. Um, but actually when you fly it actually that all makes sense it just doesn't look um, like it would make any sense to start with when you first transition onto this aircraft so standby instruments is the artificial horizon there I'm just gonna imagine that we've run oops run that switch that off for the moment um, and then left and right batteries are well they're indicated as off at the moment so switch those on and then we want to get the electric panel up because now we have the batteries on, we can see we now have power from the left battery and right battery at 28 volts and the temperatures of those and they're feeding into the bus. So these schematics are really useful in transitioning from the sort of textbook um, study to the cockpit. Uh, let's just catch up with this a bit. So, so we're actually um, meant to switch the left battery on. I've switched both on. We look through the um, CAS warnings, the crew alerting system warnings. Um, you do get a lot on here. It's not really something to be too worried about at this point, but just check to make sure there's nothing unexpected on there. Uh, they're color coded, so the white ones are just for information. Uh, the yellow ones are uh, potential problems. Um, but as soon as we actually get through the checklist, but as soon as we actually get airborne, um, as soon as we get the engines running, um, that a lot of those will go away. And so you, you kind of get used to the ones that were persistent rather than um, worrying about at this point. Um, so the next thing is uh, lights. And um, what we need to do is just check all of these lights. Okay, so uh, all the external lights, and that's part of the external walk around to make sure they're all working correctly. 
uh, and then the left and right fuel pumps are on auto so that's fine um, and the next thing would be to start the APU so that's very simple on this aircraft um, when it starts up um, it's not displaying at the moment because this display will only show you what you need to know but as soon as we start up um, it will display uh, the RPM so let's go down to here let's start the APU you can hear that running and you see the RPM and EGT now have appeared on the main display so that doesn't take very long to start and it's running now and we can switch on the APU bleed now as well um, and we're still, if you look at the electrical schematic, we're still on the external power so what we can do now is switch to the APU generator. In fact, the way to do it is to turn off external power. APU gen comes on automatically. And now you see that's greened up there, so it's feeding into the bus that way. Um, just check the electrics are all good. So we've still got battery there, hopefully charging the battery. Turned off external power now, so that could be sent. Um, left and right bleeds are off. APU bleed is on. The cross bleed is open and the air source normal and then we just use this little joystick to move between the checklist items um, the oxygen mask and goggles well that's not simulated in here but we've been checking to make sure we have them and the condition is good I assume you've done that oxygen quantity this is one of the things that's on the summary here so oxygen quantity 1200 so that's fine. Fuel quantity checks. Well, um, if we look at the sim brief, um, we've actually got a need for 1616 kilos, um, and that is. Uh, but this aircraft actually is displaying quantities in pounds, um, so it's times 2.2. Um, so we can actually see. 1660 times 2.2 .2 is going to be about 3500 so we're 48 so we're well above the minimums for that so that's fine um, clock reset well not really much to do here um, but we can get the stop stopwatch up if we want uh, nose wheel steering is off <laughs> that really catches you out the first time if you forget to switch that on you start going somewhere that ends the flight pretty quickly um, RAM air checked, right, well this is something that we can use um, the ECS panel for, uh, this one here, and so try and get that in view at the same time. So our RAM air is this little guy here, lift the um, guard up and switch it on, just make sure it's operating correctly and switch it off and close the guard, so that's, that's done. Air conditioning bleeds checked and set, okay. Um, so the air conditioning is is, man, is automatically controlled. We can switch to manual if we wish. So pressurization set landing elevation. Um, so this is uh, 12 feet, I think. Again, we can use the summary and this little guy here. And there it is. There we are. So it's 12 feet, so the nearest is zero, so that's what we're going to set for our arrival. Anti-ice wing source normal, um, so that's in the normal position, so that's okay. Probes off, um, so that's good. Reversion panel normal. Uh, lights, emergency lights into the arms position. Left and right hydraulic pump brakes on and set. So this actually switches to auto. Often where it says um, on, um, we need to leave it in auto. If it says off, we leave it in auto as well. Um, it's only when you're closing down you really need to switch those off, in my experience. Um, and the gust lock is this guy here. Um, so that needs to be on. So I just want to show you it. So it stops the throttle sort of moving inadvertently uh, at the position. And that checklist is complete. Um, Right, so next thing is the engine run switches, which are these guys here, so they're in the off position. 
uh, trim system check. Um, so the trim value is up here 6.4. Um, I'm I haven't really uh, gone into the flight manual. I'm going to bring it down to five and a half because we're not that not that heavy, so we don't need that set particularly high today. I'm guessing the value though would be um, it's good to get um, a, a proper book figure for that. Um, systems test complete. Um, ELT is required, so all of that is the emergency locator transmitter, uh, which is it's down here somewhere. Where is it? Oh, I can't find it there. Oh yeah, just hear this switch, so it's armed. Cabin control panel is required. A passenger oxygen panel. Well, the oxygen's on auto at the moment. So next thing, altimeter set. But I mean, this is where I've configured my checklist to be slightly different to this because um, we'd need to get the ATIS for that. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and um, do that now. So the ATIS 13135, so there's a couple of ways of accessing that. Um, one is to use this control panel down here. So you've got the um, larger number and the smaller number control. So 13135 can be dialed in there. And then if you click the green part, it will switch. Edinburgh Information Kilo 1400 Zulu Weather. Wind 220 at 12. Visibility 10. Sky conditions 3300 scattered. Temperature 15. Dew point 9. Altimeter 2976. Arriving runway 24. Departing runway 24. Advise on initial contact you have kilo. Okay, information kilos received. Uh, altimeter set there 2976. Uh, one thing about this, um, when you get the um, altimeter setting from X-Plane, even though this is in the UK, um, it will still give it in inches of mercury, whereas actually if you're in Edinburgh you'd get that in hectopascals or millibars. Um, and there is a way in which you can configure that on the aircraft, but I've left that as inches for now. So we've set our altimeter. Um, the next thing is the FMS to uh, set that up and initialise that. Okay, so status page, make sure the database is in date. And actually, you don't need to worry too much if yours isn't, uh, because the one that comes with it is um, is slightly out of date. I think it was March 2018. Um, if you have a subscription, as I do, to Navigraph charts, um, I get um, FMS updates. Um, in fact, I think there's one from yesterday that I haven't yet got. So, um, in theory, this is... Um, or actually, no, it does say it's still a date, um, comes to think of it, so that's fine. Ignore that. Okay, so um, what we are going to do is to put in our basic departure point and arrival point. So Edinburgh is EGPH, and one trick I learned here is you can click on the, the little thing at the bottom there and you can just type. Which makes it a lot quicker. There's a bit of a disconcerting delay as you click put the origin in. It's only the origin, it seems to do it. Um, so that's our departure and arrival point. Uh, next thing, let's put the departure for Edinburgh in here. Um, so today, runway 24, and the uh, um, GOSA 1 Charlie departure. And execute that, and that takes us out to GOZAM waypoint. Uh, this one here, that's where we start the rest of the route, uh, which would we'd turn then to um, Navigraph for that. Uh, let's put the arrival into Belfast City over here, that's ILS 22. Um, and we will go with uh, the Blaka, B L A C A arrival point there. I had put Maggie in actually, but Blaka is the one before that. It's not quite on our route though, so. Um, let's just go ahead and have a look at that route now. So you can see actually, yeah, we go um, from Gerval to 
Maggie directs um, and we've got so we'll probably end up putting Blarker in as well and then director Maggie which is the start of the RLS okay so let's go ahead and stick the root in now uh, so after Gozam uh, we've got the P600 so as that's an airway point we need to actually go up to this screen here so uh, first part is the the SID um, and then the next part we need to put in P600 So I've had to start again, this um, this is very buggy, this uh, FMS, so I've had to put the route in again to clear it. Um, so we need to put the departure in again. And then let's try just putting in the route here. I put the departure and the arrival and then wasn't able to enter the intermediate route, which is a bug. So P600 is all the way down to GIRVA. Um, and then we are um, going to Blanca. Um, so we can type that in as well. Uh, Blanca actually. Execute that and then we can put the arrival in it's for Belfast City, 2-2, Larka, execute that. So because I've already got that in the route, hopefully no discontinuity, but let's have a look. So runway 24 from Edinburgh to the Uniform Whiskey, a couple of waypoints there, out to Gosan, which is the start of our navigation, um, down to Gerva, Larka, and then Maggie, and this is part point from Maggie onwards, part of the ILS um, to um, ILS 2-2 into Belfast City, so that's great. Uh, the other thing we can do with this, uh, which is really useful, um, is we can use this to set up our uh, radio tuning. So if we've got a few frequencies to put in, um, then we can, we can use it for that. So one of those is going to be the RLS into Belfast. So let's have a look at what that is. So that's 108.1. So we could tune that on the glass panel down here. What you'd actually do is use the control up on the main control panel to do that. Or we can just type in our frequency and stick that into NAV1. Um, same with the ATC code. So we'll say we've got our clearance now and it's 4013 for example. And we can just click in there and it just saves a lot of typing. So that's in the flight management computer. I'm not sure if that's actually a feature. I think it is possible to do that through the flight management computer. Uh, it does make sense because on the way it normally works is when you're engaging with an ILS, it will automatically tune the frequency for you. So it does need to have that jurisdiction over your controls, your um, nav and comms. Okay, so that's good. So we've got a route in there. Um, it's got certain height restrictions in there as well. We need to put our cruise altitude. Now, I'm pretty sure it's not going to light 240, which is what I've got on Simbrief. Unable cruise altitude. Um, so, uh, we're pro probably going to um, we'll keep it in there for now. It's not going to stop us doing anything, but um, it will impact uh, how far we can go uh, with this. You see what it's doing is climbing up to 15,000 and starts the descent after Tango Romeo November. Um, and so, actually, I don't know, 240 is just too high for this particular route. That's fine. I'll just clear that. But we've got, in terms of the flight management computer, we've got everything set up that we need. Okay, so that's the FMS done. That's that, ch that one checklist item. Um, so it's click enter to say we've done that. Avionics we've set. Right, so the V speeds. Um, so the V speeds um, are available through the refs button uh, up on the main control panel here. Um, and the way we change those is cycle between them and so uh, these are actually accurate for our weights today um, but if you need to make a change when you come over to the tune button here 
Um, so if we wanted 117, for example, um, and 121, we'll do it that way there. Okay. Um, refs also gives you your learning reference, um, go around your minimum, uh, which I may as well put in at the moment. Uh, let's have a quick look. Okay, decision else to 212, so we'll stick that in at 250. So sometimes you use the other control for this. Okay, that's that set. Um, and this also gives the ability to change between um, hectopascals and inches of mercury and some other controls here. So we'll just keep the V ref, uh, well they're, they're enunciated now in the attitude indicator um, so we don't really need to keep that, in fact I think that will just disappear after a while anyway. Okay so this set anyway, uh, CS messages checked, nothing new on there so that's fine. Um, so the um, lights and galley um, power and everything, we've got the um, Camin lights are on at the moment, uh, so there is a there is another control here, uh, which gives us the ability to um, control the Camin lights on the animation screen there. And I've got a position set in the cabin, so you can actually see the impact of that. Um, one of the reviewers when this aircraft first came out was talking about the fact it's. Um, being just on or off lighting is not really very good and I agree, I think it'd be nice to have some ability set up or moody lighting but we're done on that one so move on to the next checklist which is the engine start back to the front um, so we, we still have the doors open so we're going to be closing those now so we can do that in two ways we can actually physically get up and close them or there's a switch to do it automatically but let's do it the more immersive route and what that does it closes the blinds as well and the other thing we've got is this privacy blinds we'll close that okay so um Weather, well we've got it um, obviously uh, wind westerly um, within our limits so that's absolutely fine. Um, we'll check the Belfast weather en route, I did check it before recording this and everything's looking good so uh, fingers crossed for that but we'll check it as soon as we're um, in the cruise. Um, door beacon sign, okay so here's where we uh, would normally do the, um, normally we'd set everything up here um, with our lights and we'd actually set them up for the walk around which uh, is something I'm going to be bypassing here obviously I've skipped ahead a little bit uh, just to show you um, the external pre-flight here uh, we can actually fast pre-flight that um, which is what I meant to do earlier I wasn't going to go through the whole thing um, but that will remove all the flags um, remove all the covers um, and uh, set it up ready for flight so uh, also um, we've got all the lights set up at the moment but I want to be able to switch some of these off uh, so let's see so we want strobes can go to beacon now we don't have anyone in the back because it's a positioning flight uh, but we'll put the seatbelt sign on landing lights off taxi lights off nav logo well normally put the um, logo light on at night but just keep the nav light on for now so we've got the nav and the beacon as the external lights so that's fine um, right, park emergency brake set, uh, pressure above 2000, so we have the brake set, but um, what that's reminding us to do is just check on the hydraulic panel, make sure we've got 2000, which we do, uh, which is enough pressure to enunciate the brake. Uh, chocks removed, which will be part of our pre-flight, which we just um, did the rapid one. Gust lock off, and that has been removed, that's stowed in that position there. Thrust levers idle. Engine run switches on. So these these guys here. Uh, and then engine start. So very easy to start the engines on this aircraft. It's semi-automated. Um, use these two starters down here. We'll go with the right one first. 
And what we're going to do to that, actually, we're not going to um, we're not going to do a pushback. Um, we have enough room to do a um, a U-turn here. So normally we would do this as part of the pushback. But let us just start the right engine. Uh, we see the valley's going up now. Got ignition, EGT rising. So it is highly automated. You don't need to add a, worry about adding fuel. It's all automated, but obviously it's important to keep an eye on it. So we've got to start on the right. Let's go ahead and start the left now. through the rest of the checks. Your damper is on. Wing anti-ice on and check for two minutes. Well, I'm not going to do it for two minutes but here's the ice anti-ice controls and you see they green up as they come on. Okay two minutes would be a safety thing. Um, windshield heats we're going to put those on now. We keep the probes off that means that probe warning will remain in the um, CAS. Flap set for takeoff. Okay, so it's set 10 degrees, that's the value we're setting here, you can see that is coming down now. Hydraulics checked, so again, it's good keeping this panel open because you can actually check and see if everything's working and everything's as it should be. So one thing I've noticed, the PTU is, that needs to be on. Sorry if I'm making you a bit seasick here. Um, flight and ground spoilers okay the flight spoilers are um, set in the stow position grounds set to auto flight controls checked we well, normally um, will do this as part of our taxi out but you can get the flight controls on their uh, screen on there we can actually move through the full range and make sure we don't have anything inhibiting that and also make sure they're correct because I accidentally had to do a quick calibration on my joystick and I accidentally set the roll and pitch the other way around and it, I was I did check the flight controls and somebody told me it wasn't right until I took off and then found that um, he crashed it so not a good idea um, electric panel generator and electric are on we're still on APU we close that off in flight um, trims, well I've set at 5.5, we'll assume that's a calculated value. PFD brief complete, departure brief, well, it'll be a left seat departure from 2.4 following the GOSEC 1 Charlie departure. Um, we are going to set, well, we've got 5,000 set up here, um, but we will actually set heights in accordance with that strict um, stand instrument departure. Let's see how we get on with that. Uh, radar terrain as required, well we've got um, the option of um, oh, where is it here? That's the terrain control. That's the weather control. There isn't anything showing, uh, so no significant weather to be bothered about. Anti-ice panel. We've got everything off um, apart from the windows heats. Passengers briefed, and we'd probably just cycle this uh, just to remind them. To sit down. Nozzle steering on. Don't want to leave without that on and just check the CES so um, we've got the probe and stall protect fail um, cross bleed is open that's just a, a notification to a standby instruments off which we want on at the moment um, so we're left with the left and right probe heat off and we switch it on just to take off cross bleed can remain open um, and then park an emergency brake on, which is what we what we have um, already. So happy with that. So we are about to taxi, so we'll get our taxi clearance. And the first thing that we'll do after that, as we start coming out here, is the brakes and the nose wheel steering check. Um, one thing you've got to be careful of is you, if your brakes are going to fail, you don't want to crash into another aircraft or a person. So uh, we're going to do a turn to the left anyway. So brakes released. Apply a little bit of power. And turn to the left, just 
check the brakes, both sides, both working, thank you. Now one thing I find with this aircraft is it is very, very powerful and I sometimes just use one of the throttles to control it for taxi. Okay, so first item checked. Fuel balance check. Now the reason we say that is because we've been running the APU off the right tank so it's slightly less than the left but it's absolutely fine, the balance is fine. Uh, the other thing we've got to check here is the reversers, which is a... I haven't seen that on the checklist before, actually, so this is a little bit unusual. So all we do is we check that while we're on the level. So here's our taxiway here. And it's just checking, really, that the reversers engage correctly. We'll do that now. and also to make sure that the reverse buckets, the things that go over the back of the aircraft, I'll show you that now. There's the buckets there. And make sure they're stowed correctly. So let's say just using one of the engines to keep control. Some 47. So reverses have checked out okay. Uh, we've got the N1 bugs set um, and flaps are 10 degrees for takeoff. Taxi checks are complete. Sure, so it's ready to move that out of the view now. So we're using our main view for taxiing. Uh, <laughs> I can see we've got another one of those situations, another X plane bug. We get a helicopter occupying the runway, K11737 never able to, jo to enter the runway because of it, and you have to just drive through them. I'm sure people are aware of that. Highly annoying. So one other thing that uh, we need to do here, a couple of things actually which I added onto my own checklist, um, which you really do need to do, is there's a button called nav source, this one here, and we need to cycle through to get FMS1 in view. Um, that's the uh, That means that the autopilot will be slaved to the flight management computer um, rather than the sort of navigational aid. Um, so that is set up, that's good. Uh, the other thing is we, we don't have any takeoff mode here, so lateral and um, vertical takeoff modes. Um, so for example you could set up a takeoff mode to hold your um, pitch and wings level for example. Um, in this case we are going straight into the procedure we're going into the, um, the standard instrument departure procedure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to set the aircraft in a takeoff mode by pressing the toga button, and that puts takeoff in both the lateral and the vertical mode. And that holds a, um, a kind of acceleration attitude, and that with FMS now um, on our as our first waypoint uh, means that we'll actually fly the SID. So it's going to be fun and games. Uh, the other thing we should do, again on my own checklist, is put our uh, transponder to standby. Right, we'll go through the lineup checks, cycle the lights there. Should have taxi lights on already. We'll put the strobes on as we line up, which we're about to do, so I can go on now. Some of these buttons are actually unidirectional, in that you can't 
push the toggle up or down it's just one button cycles between uh, transponder well I can come on now and we'll put TARA and final check on the CAS crossbleed is open um, we still have the APU providing air so um, that can, that's fine um, probe heats, well probe heats can come on now and so we line up with one known um, annunciation which is the cross bleeds and they can remain open and that is good and then the next one will be the after takeoff checks as promised so we could have taken that on the turn but uh, what I'm going to do is just stick the part brake on and bring the power up a little bit all ready to go uh, landing lights can come on now it's a bit of a job actually setting takeoff power but it shows it in the configuration do now is we can switch into our VNAV mode um, now this is playing silly buggers this is where you have to take some care with this system because it's full of bugs so it switched us into minus 20,000 feet, which is, uh, which is a bug. I'm going to set this at 6. This is the height restriction for the instrument departure. And I've had to bring the throttles back to avoid overspeed. Let's run through the after takeoff checks. So landing gear flat up, taxi lights off. Uh, anti ice is required. A sharp eye on the on this, as I say, very very powerful aircraft. Um, so we're okay as is. Thrust levers to climb. Well, as I say we're about leveling off here. At this point, hydraulic pumps can come off, but actually, I find you need to leave them in the auto position rather than off. Um, bleeds transfer as required, so we can switch the aircraft. Uh, engine bleeds on at the moment and the APU can come off as well and you see we're already busting the 250 limit there uh, APU off going to close the checklist for now so we need to bring the flight management computer up and there's our current leg so we are above 4500 and then the next restriction is 6000 which is why I set that on the uh, the bug 
the uh, altitude bug. Now it's meant to be taking feeds off this, but um, uh, it wasn't working all that well last time I tried it. So we see what I mean about the navigation display. It's, you have to be really zoomed in um, to see that properly. Uh, let's just change the mode on it. I meant to have the um, nav mode on as well. Um, okay, now it's following. I was wondering why it wasn't following our path. Uh, does mean we're probably going to have to go direct to this one here, the next waypoint, and execute that. And and it's this high restriction is why we can't reach flight level two four zero. Um, I am going to assume that we've got a clearance to go a bit above because it's going to be painful seeing here. And what we'll do is just put that into vertical speed mode up to, well, 3000 should be fine. Just easing the power. In fact, what we can do is switch up to flight change and that will hold that speed and give us whatever climb rate to hold that speed, which is actually much more useful when we've got speed restriction and we will stick that up at 16,000 flight for 160 oh come on So that's the problem. I, I, I had no absolutely no visibility of my of my track because I just cannot see it clearly. You have to be so so incredibly zoomed in to see anything. Um, and I can just about make it out now, and that's occupying the whole screen. It's a real weakness of this system. It's fine if you've got something like um, four flight um, to follow your path, but without it, you're really screwed. Right, let's increase the speed now. But it might be a better idea to set the vertical speed and then the speed will just increase up to the point you want to hold it and then click back to VLC, uh, FLC to hold that. So pass through 10,000, uh, let's get the landing lights off. I'm going to keep the um, seatbelt sign for the whole journey because it's a fairly short one. And we'll tag that speed there and put us back into the climb. ATC aren't too happy if you um, just level off when you're meant to be in a climb. so. It's always worth sort of switching to vertical speed to at least get a thousand feet a minute while the speed's building up. Altimeters are on standard pressure, O2 miles checked, cabin signs as required, external lights as required. to 200. So we have to watch it as we get to level off because there's, there's no water throttle on this aircraft. And 
and while I'm at it I'm just going to get the ATIS for Belfast 13662 set up the ILS 108.1 for Belfast as well and what we'll do is just switch that ident to so we can hear the ident when we get near um, I don't think it's correct for Belfast even though it was picking up the ILS correctly but the ident wasn't right Last time I tried it. And there's a sync mode as well, you just see um, come up in the uh, engine thing, um, syncing the two engines together, which is quite handy. I think that's as much, um, it's, it's more about comfort to your ears than anything else. So now we need to start the scent. I'm going to put 12,000 in initially. And if I switch into VNAV mode, and then I've got to, I've got to get VNAV in first, so I get a little V up in there, and then switch into a vertical speed mode. And you see it immediately sets minus 19,999. Um, however, um, it shouldn't go below the, we shouldn't really go below 2000 uh, so that's not working right well so let's turn VNAV off vertical speed mode and we'll set it into a, a small descent uh, so we'll go for 2000 initially, I've got to be at 15,020 miles uh, just now it's in the descent, see if I can switch back into V, v mode Silly buggers. I think what it I think the problem with it actually is it set the descent speed to 250 so it's now coming back to that which is a bit seems a bit low and that's why it wasn't descending so I'm just going to switch VNAV off vertical speed 2000 and we'll descend at a, a more respectable speed because that's just way too slow we're not even halfway there I could override it, of course, on the flight management computer, but um, I'm not going to bother. We'll just um, override it on this occasion. But VNAV's a, a little bit of a pain, to say the least.
over speed over speed over speed over speed over speed you hear over that speed. a lot the over speed warning it's very easy to over speed this aircraft and what you can do is just feed in a bit of spoiler to just make sure the speed is holding just below the red arc of course that red arc comes becomes slower uh, as you descend as well We are about right there. I'm just going to use this little thing here just to dial in a slightly slower descent. And um, the only rule really is the um, 250 knots below 10,000. And I think the reason it was restricting us there is because it's using the US um, 250 knots below 18,000, which is why it kicked in there. Belfast City Information Lima 1400 Zulu Weather Wind 190 at 10 Visibility 10 Sky Conditions 1100 Broken 3100 Overcast Temperature 15 Dew point 14 Altimeter 2974 Arriving Runway 22 Departing Runway 22 Advise on initial contact you have Lima So, direct to Blarka at the moment, 20 miles to go, and then to Maggie, and that's the start of our approach. And then from Maggie, as it goes to the CI-22 fix on the ILS, we'll switch to heading mode, because one thing this doesn't do, it doesn't switch from flight management mode to um, ILS mode for you. It's something airliners do tend to do. And I think it's probably just because it's quite a basic FMS that they provide, uh, but you have to think about these things in advance. So one thing I do need to do here is I need to just um, want to level off there at 10,000, bring the speed right down to 250. And if I put it into flight change mode, and bring the speed down. That should just serve the purpose of levelling off until it's hit that speed and then continue the descent to hold that speed. So ATC would be going nuts at us um, if we did that for too long but we might just bring some speed brake in just to help that on its way a little bit. And the elegant way of doing that is about a thousand foot before your 
the speed restriction you um, put it into vertical speed mode and, and bleed the speed off but there we are just approaching 250 now so dropping down below to 10,000 landing lights can come on seatbelt signs already on we left it on from before uh, we've set the uh, we've set the pressure for Belfast City our next point is 7339 at Blanca so we're well on the route for that uh, I think we could probably feed in a little bit of power actually and this will come all the way down to 2000 I've set 2000 as the lowest level and that's the point we um, start the approach So I've set up some um, s um, cameras in the in the rear. So I've got a uh, internal looking one, and then a couple looking out over the wings on both sides, like that. And then just give you a bit more of a tour. We've got the toilets, and before behind the toilet, we've got the cloakroom and cargo area. So this door is obviously for loading from outside, so you're not having to trip all your stuff through the cabin. checking the temperature here just at zero um, so just check that does rise before we hit the clouds and then we should be okay without any of the uh, anti-ice on so we're above zero now so haven't quite hit the clouds so we don't need to worry about that any anti-ice so one thing is we've got to be around 3000 at Maggie on the heights so uh, I do find this font is so difficult to read this text is so dark it's uh, three minutes to go um, and we need to drop another thriller three and a half thousand feet so actually it's fine just trying to work out what our descent profile should be Probably put it up there and put it into I would well, okay flight yeah keep it on flight level change we, we just want to hold the 250 that's the thing different um, modes here that's probably the one we want actually
altimeters we've set. Fuel quantity and quantity is good and balance is good. Landing elevation we have set, anti-ice is required, not required, extra lights on. Landing data is on the refs page and review the approach. So ILS into 2-2. Two, two. I don't have the ident yet, which is a bit peculiar because I had that yesterday. Five miles to Maggie, and then we fly the intercept. That's where we switch from um, navigation mode to heading mode. And then we'll pick up on the RLS from there because I have to change the nav source to nav one. I set up 219, which is the left turn that we're about to make um, on a heading hold. So let's switch that in now. That will continue around to where it's going. Nav source, bring that down to nav 1. And then we can arm the nav 1, which is our localizer. And you can see saying fly right which is what we'd expect and coming down to 2000 and we could uh, let's bleed off the speed a little bit Course is two one nine. Said it should have been 264 from Maggie to intercept. So we've leveled off there now, that's why the power's come down a little bit. So, first stage of flap in. And localizer's established, we can go into approach mode now. So, glycope's capture. That's coming in now. Caught that just in time, actually. Gear down now, second stage of flat. Um, check, see, wind slightly from the left, it's a 10 knot, which is good. So, got some clouds, some low clouds here at Belfast City today.
it is. VREF, this is should have been set, but we'll treat it as correct. 117, probably it will be a bit less than that because we're lighter. So I'm going to take the autopilot off now. And the final stage of flapping. Slightly from the left. So we come off that first exit. So that's a bit under three thousand foot, so this really is capable of landing fairly short space. So we put the flaps on. And the lights can come off. The other thing we need to do is switch the APU on. So we'll just park it there for a moment. So a quick way we can get the checklists uh, up on the control panel is um, can either click on this button here on and the control bring it up there but um, another way of doing that is to click on the glass a couple of times and it gets it puts it into a, a better position for visibility and then you've got this control here um, but we still need the checklist open so let's go through the um, after landing check so probes off off as well. Uh, Anti-ice is not required. Flaps up we have. Lights and strobes is required. Well the main strobes can come off. Um, the landing lights are off and we switch the taxi lights on. Transponder set as required so that'll just be standby and good practice will be to reset it at this point. Um, and then we, we're good until we are popped up, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just using one of the throttle levers just to keep this under control. We don't need a gate with this aircraft. Um, So yeah, one of the throttle levers is just about right really to keep this aircraft under control, as it is powerful.
things are staring off. And you play it off. And we put the APU blade on now. Engine one switches off. Ice windshield heat off, everything's off. Left right hydraulics are all off. Let's lock it on. Cockpit lighting, we set for day, and then APU shutdown is required. Well, if you were handing over to a crew, you'd probably keep that running at this point. Uh, if we wanted for the electrics, we could switch on the external power, we'll just leave the APU running for the moment. Um, one thing I really like about this is if we now open the main door, let's just uh, get the animations up there. You, s you then hear the APU in the background. Very cool. So that, in that jet engine was our APU running. Um, so actually if I close it down you'll actually hear that. So let's switch to external power and the APU off. And run through the rest of these. Air source off. Emergency lights off. Stand my instruments off. Left and right battery off. Part brake is set. If it's chocked, you could actually take that off at this point. And cabin clean and restocked. And we're done. And then we're back to starting point. So yeah, that was uh, it was really a very quick positioning flight to showcase the aircraft and some of the systems um, on board. Um, the aircraft's caught is capable of a lot more, uh, though. In fact, we could we could load up here and be on our way to New York non-stop in under six hours. Amazingly. Um, so if you like flying jets and want something relatively modern, then the Challenger delivers a really good balance, I think, of performance and ease of use. It's very immersive. It's relatively easy to learn to fly, though it's quite a lot to learn. I think um, you're left wanting a little bit more in terms of guidance, but there's some YouTube videos um, available. Um, this one, I'll continue to put more videos as I learn myself. Um, what What is there not to like about the aircraft? Well, the main my main bugbear is this silly navigation display. Um, it it works. I'm sure it works absolutely perfectly in the real aircraft, but um, you really have to go in so close to see any detail on it. Um, one solution would be to have that as a pop-out window, and the other solution would be just to increase the font size. So go a long way. You can declutter it, isn't it? But I don't think it's the clutter that's the problem. It's the font size is just too small. Um, also the colours as well, this um, magenta colour is very difficult to read unless you're really close up, uh, so I don't like that much. Um, but you know, there's not really a lot to dislike about it. Um, um, you can get around that by using external apps like um, Navigraph Charts uh, and Forflight. Uh, Navigraph Charts is the coverage for Europe, uh, but it's scant on any extra information, whereas Forflight is, um, is more region based, um, and I've only got a subscription to the US. Uh, Europe's coming out soon, but it will be additional cost, um, and it's uh, that's just a consideration if you're if you're a, a sim only pilot. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a sophisticated aircraft. Uh, most desktop pilots should be able to cope with. It's got great performance, delivers a good balance of fun and complexity, and an aircraft worthy of a spot in your hangar. So until the next time, thanks so much for joining me today, and take care. Goodbye.